At number 10 spot, we have the water tank of Dapashi. Located in Dapashi Basundara, I am so sorry if I mispronounced that, lies this innocent looking underground tank to store water around the community. Although this is necessary for any community and serves as a benefit, many locals are actually too afraid to go anywhere near it. Of course, this doesn't mean that they couldn't get their water due to fear. Instead, they would probably just ask someone else to get it for them. But what could stop people from getting a basic necessity like water? It all started with the sounds of crying, shouting, and other strange noises coming from inside of the tank. And it was said that the sounds grew even louder by the nighttime. This is also the time where locals claim that they also see the spirit of a decomposing man standing nearby the tank. Legends say that a group of robbers mugged a man near this water tank. And instead of a quick theft, one of the men accidentally killed the man. So they thought that they could put the body inside of this tank and they locked it. But instead, hours later, they would hear the man struggling for his life inside of the water tank. Soon after, the man would pass and the robbers would get caught. But imagine drinking from this water tank after this incident. Doesn't this kind of remind you of Cecil Hotel a bit? Anyone? At number nine spot, we have Raniban. Many people know Raniban for their breathtaking views and incredible sceneries, but inside of this nature escape is hidden something dark. Within the jungle of Raniban village, there is this gigantic tree looking straight out of a cartoon with its widespread and exposing roots. Except take away the beauty from this tree and you'll understand why every local avoids this. Warning, the story is pretty explicit, so viewer discretion is advised. Legend goes that several years ago, a man assaulted and murdered a girl right underneath this tree. After some research, this turned out to be a true story story and has a lot more disturbing details that I couldn't mention on this video. However, after her death, people in the area started to hear noticeable crying coming from underneath the tree. But when they went to investigate, nothing was there. And to make things even more spookier, just days after this, the man who murdered the girl was executed by hanging on the same tree. So best believe there's more than one ghost sitting underneath it. At number 8 spot, we have the ghost of Mount Everest. Being the tallest mountain in the world, people are bound to come in thousands to conquer the challenge. However, with a fatality rate at 14%, many climbers have not been able to finish a trip and their bodies still lie on this mountain to this day. So best believe after seeing these bodies and hearing their horrific stories, some ghost stories in Everest are bound to pop up. On your journey to the top, chances are you'll come across the 3,000 corpses that lie on the mountain to this day. One is a man known as Green Boots, as seen on the body at the time of his death, but his real name is Swang Bajor. Many climbers claim to see the apparition of this climber with Green Boots encourage them to push through the journey. Being at such an extreme height, many mountaineers suffer from altitude sickness and cause causes many to see vivid hallucinations, with the majority of them claiming to see ghosts all around them. And I'm not surprised. At number 7 spot, we have the Royal Palace of Nepal. On June 1st, 2001, one of the worst royal massacres occurred at the Royal Palace of Nepal. The deaths included 9 members of the royal family, including King Barindra and Queen Ashraya. The culprit turned out to be the son and crown prince, Dipendra, who is said to have opened fire on the palace grounds when a party was happening. He shot his own dad, his own mother, and his own siblings. And since we're talking about a monarchy, and also because he killed all other lines of succession, he was appointed king, but only for a temporary time as he was in a coma since the attack due to shooting himself. Shortly after the massacre, locals around the palace begin to hear sounds of screaming, shouting, and the most notorious sound they would document is the sound of gunshots. They claim it was the gunshots from the massacre and its haunting sounds are still trapped in the palace to this day. At number 6 spot, we have the Lakey Dance. To educate y'all in Nepal culture, one of their infamous traditions is this Lakey Dance. This is considered the dance of a demon, and although the name is pretty daunting, the reason they do this is not. So Laki is the term they use to denote carnivorous demons. So the story goes that Laki fell in love with a Nepalese girl. So in an attempt to win her heart, the demon decides to take human form to see his lover. But when he decides to enter the city, everyone decides to capture him. Well, because he is a demon. So the king meets with his demon and makes a pretty generous offer. He proposes that he gives a demon a place in the city only if he promises to protect the children from tragedies and other supernatural entities. So the demon agreed, hence the dance. The costumes they use are both beautiful and pretty terrifying depending on how you want to look at it and one odd thing about this tradition dance opposed to other traditional dances is that this dance is not taught but it said that the dancers have it inherited through their genes this also causes many others to believe that the demon is in fact controlling them but in the end of the day he means well so it's okay right in the humper list we have devgod devgod is a religious hindu site located in chichwan also known as aryaga on july 12 2009 police discovered several human skulls and bones scattered all around the area the case remains unsolved to this day well it's because the ground were formerly used for cremation. Groups like the Agoris and Tantrics come here to do some questionable rituals as well, which only adds to the local belief that this place is truly haunted. Specifically, locals claim to see around four to five women apparitions approaching the river by night. They appear to be dancing, but they're floating above the ground. The craziest thing about this is that they only start this dance by lighting themselves on fire, and only when they are completely engulfed in flames is when they'll begin their dance. And people claim to see their dance daily. At number four spot, we have Moogling and Naryangat. If you want to 
take a hike in Nepal, this place is definitely a must with their stunning waterfalls and untouched nature. Except despite this beauty, locals warn tourists to not travel down the roads nearby at night. This is because many have reported hitchhiking ghosts who disappear shortly after being picked up. As well, they also claim to see apparitions running in front of their car, which only causes a lot more accidents in the area. Police have already discovered several human bodies in the area with many of the cases still unresolved. This led many to believe in the supernatural, but many others proposed a serial kill in the area, and it would make sense. But two theories, two bad options. In the past, the towns around the highway were just deserted fishing regions, which was a dangerous place for crime and violence. The spirits found on the highway were said to be tortured souls whose remains might lie unattended in the woods still. At number three spot, we have the Kia. A Kia is translated into a ghostly figure, but ghosts in Nepal are seen as something different than we see in the Western world. In Nepal, it's widely believed that every house contains a Kia and their backstory. Like any ghost, these Kia can either be good or they can be bad. The good will obviously protect the family, the home, and your luck, but the bad ones will do everything in their power to destroy your family and ultimately every single one of your lives. You'll know if you've seen a Kia because they are pretty distinct. They appear as a slender skeleton, so in a way they act as a poltergeist because you can see them the whole time instead of them just being invisible like any other ghost. It's believed they like to pull pranks like throwing objects around the house and throwing blankets off of you. And in some cases, they will try to scare the family so bad that they will choose to leave the house completely, leaving the Kia all alone in the house. Although you can see this ghost, the majority of people will never actually know if they have a Kia in their place, and only you'll know if you fetch it out and seek one. Maybe you'll have one, but who knows. At number two spot with the Bokshi. Nepal legend says that witchcraft is widely practiced in remote areas of Nepal, except at this time, their witch description was far from accurate. Basically, any woman who had something bad to say or raised her voice at the patriarchy would be considered a witch or a Bokshi. The problem with Bokshi is that it has become so extreme that women are being murdered in the name of this specific ritual and are forced to become a ghost where they will be lost and seen roaming around the streets looking for answers. Even to this day, people are getting accused of being witches. Am I being confused or am I in the Salem witch trial still? Because why are people still believing in this stuff? Just for excuse to execute women. I will never get it and good for girls for haunting the streets for this one because this one is kind of reasonable in my opinion. At number one spot, we have the Sundarijal. Located nearby Kathmandu is a river that is nowhere near your regular rivers back at home. Back in the day, up until now, the river has been mainly used as a source of drinking water, but the fact many locals claim that the river is haunted has led many people to avoid a necessity like water. The river runs through a rainforest which is said to have restless souls hidden inside of it. As well, many have said that even touching the river can lead to your doom. Witnesses have seen locals and visitors reaching the river's edge only to tumble over and drown shortly after, and for some statistics, at least one person loses their life in this very river every single year. Now, as the years go by, the body count begins to rise up, causing more and more restless spirits. It could almost be said that this river is the closest thing to nature's own human sacrifice. Coming in at a number 10 spot, we have the Elevator Game. The Elevator Game is a mysterious and potentially dangerous ritual that is said to bring you to another world. This game has its origins in Japan and is played by entering an elevator in a public building with at least 10 floors. The player must press specific buttons in a specific order without anyone entering or even leaving the elevator in order to reach this other world. In the other world, electronics do not work, the lights are off, and all that can be seen from the windows is a red cross in the distance. To return back to the original world, the players must repeat the sequence of button presses and be very vigilant of their surroundings. The player must be careful not to look at the woman who enters the elevator on the fifth floor as she is not human. If someone enters or even leaves the elevator during the ritual, the players must start over. And you must be wondering what the specific ritual is, but if you guys actually want to know about that, search it up because I'm not going to say it for you guys because I don't want you guys doing this. Because for those who have played, it is said that if they faint or lose consciousness during the ritual, they may wake up in their own home. But they must be careful to examine their surroundings as it may not be the same home they left. It is important to not attempt this ritual too many times as well as it can lead to an accidental slipping between both worlds. And it's also worth mentioning that if the woman does not enter the elevator or the players do not reach the 10th floor, they should immediately return to the first floor and completely end the game. At a number nine spot, we have the Rokurokubi, the long necked demon. The legend of the Rokurokubi is a supernatural creature from Japanese mythology that originated during the Edo period, which is 1603 to 1867. The Rokurobi is a beautiful woman by day, but at night she undergoes a metamorphosis where her neck extends and she begins to hunt. Some versions of this legend says that this creature can be recognized by small white marks on their neck, or even by the way they sleep with their head far from their body. 
But in reality, when I see photos of this, all I can think is, if they got a long neck, they're probably this creature. According to folklore, however, there are different explanations for the origin of this creature. Some believe they were once Buddhists who broke the religion's principles and were then cursed as punishment, while other people believe, while other people see the transformation as a supernatural expression of the person's desires. There are also legends that suggest they are Oni, which are these Japanese demons seeking revenge or even simply just playing tricks on humans. And it's also worth mentioning that this creature comes in many different forms, with female ones attacking men and male ones attacking women. The Nukekubi is one of the most dangerous forms, however, known for its detached head that just flies around and attacks its prey. At our number 8 spot, we have Hito Bashira. Hito Bashira, also known as Human Pillars, is a custom of human sacrifice that was once practiced in Japan. It involved burying a victim alive under or near large scale buildings, such as dams, bridges, and castles. The practice was believed to appease the gods and protect the structure from natural disasters and enemy attacks. The practice was believed to appease the gods and protect the structure from natural disasters and enemy attacks. The tradition of human sacrifice in Japan dates back to the construction of aristocratic tombs in ancient times. The use of human pillars persisted in various parts of Japan until the 16th century. Legend has it that the Maruoka Castle, one of the oldest surviving castles in Japan, was built with the help of a human pillar named Oshizu. When the stone wall of the castle kept collapsing, a vassal suggested the use of a human sacrifice, Oshizu, who is this one-eyed woman living in poverty who volunteered to even become this human pillar in the first place. But she did this under one condition and that one condition being that one of her sons was turned into a samurai. She was buried under the central pillar of the castle keep and the construction was successfully completed. However, her son was not made a samurai and thus her spirit has caused moat to overflow with spring rain every single year and some people even report to see her ghost when they enter and visit this castle. As a result, people erected a small tomb to soothe her spirit and a poem was even handed down about the rain caused by the tears of Oshizu's sorrow. It is speculated that the instability of the walls of the Maroka castle was due to the design of the castle in the first place, which is more indicative of earlier fortresses. On the other hand, the Matsu castle is also rumored to have been constructed on human sacrifice buried under the castle stone walls. The victim was a beautiful young maiden who was fond of dancing and is referred to as the Maiden of the Matsu. After the castle was built, a law was passed forbidding any girl to dance in the streets of Matsu because the hill Oshiruyama would shudder and the castle would shake from top to bottom. Although this practice has not been continued, it's just crazy to think that this was actually done and some of the pillars in Japan actually contain real human sacrifice. At our number 7 spot, we have the Kisaragi Station. In 2004, a 2 chan user named Hasumi posted on a thread asking for help because she got on the wrong train at Shin Hamatsu Station. This was rather strange because she usually caught the same train after work and trains in the station only go in one direction. She started getting really anxious because she remembered the stops only being a few minutes between each station, but on this specific train ride, they were just much longer. They even went through a tunnel, but her usual line didn't go through any sort of tunnel. She walked to the front car to ask the conductor for help, but the curtain was closed and no one answered. She then knocked on the door, but that's when the train suddenly stopped at Kisaragi Station. As she left the train, she was filled with huge anxiety and fear, but as she tried to go back, the train door shut on her. As all this was happening, she was messaging people on this discussion board on 4chan about the station, but when they all replied, they had said that no such station existed in Japan. She decided to exit the station and walk back along the tracks, even back through the tunnel she had gone through under earlier. She reported strange sounds like drums in the distance, and even a voice telling her that walking on the tracks is extremely dangerous. As she grew more afraid, she turned back to go around, but she saw an old man with one leg, which then slowly disappeared right after. When she finally got out of the tunnel, a man came up offering help and to drive her to the nearest station. This is when she posted on the thread for the very last time, saying that the man was muttering to himself, then her phone died, and she was never heard from the thread again. At a number 6 spot, we have the 1932 Shirokiya Department Store. On December 16, 1932, tragedy struck the Shirokiya Department Store in Japan during their year-end Christmas theme sale. The festive decorations of the season turned into a nightmare as a fire broke out at the toy section just a few minutes before the store was about to open. The fire quickly spread to floors 4 and 8, filling the staircase with smoke and cutting off major escape routes. 
This left many shoppers and employees stranded on the upper floors, desperate for a way to find safety. Some of those who were trapped made makeshift ropes from clothing or curtains and climbed down to safety. Others were not so lucky. They instead fell to their deaths or even suffocated in the smoke-filled building. In total, 14 people lost their lives and 67 were injured in the Shirokiya department store fire. In the aftermath of the fire, stories and legends began to circulate about the tragedy. One particularly interesting legend related to the traditional dress of the saleswoman in the store. At the time, it was customary for women who wore traditional kimonos to go without panties. According to this urban legend, some of the saleswomen in kimonos who were trapped on the upper floors chose not to jump the safety nets that had been set up below because they were just ashamed to not be seen below without underwear. While there is no real proof that this legend actually existed, it is said to have led on to an increase in the popularity of western style panties in Japan, which is both odd and and kind of terrifying at the same time. I don't know what to think. In the hub for our list, we have the ghost taxi passengers. After the devastating 311 earthquake and tsunami that hit the northeastern Japan coast, sightings of yuri or ghosts have increased drastically in cities like Ishinomaki and Miyagi Prefecture. As these spirits have not been properly put to rest, some may have not even been aware that they are dead and are often searching for a way home. As a result, taxi drivers all over this place have long been subject to ghostly encounters in the form of passengers trying to go home or to a very specific place. This has almost become a norm for taxi drivers around Japan to be asked if they had ever had a ghostly passenger before. Tahoku Gaoyun University conducted a study called the Awakened Spiritual Earthquake Studies that involved interviews with more than 100 Ishinomaki taxi drivers who had supernatural encounters. Many drivers reported picking up passengers who seemed to be wet or wearing winter coats in the summer, months after the disaster in the cold months of March. Most drivers reported running the meter and having to pay the fee for the vanished passenger. One particular driver reported a chilling story about a man in winter clothing whom he, whom he picked up in the summer who asked to be taken to an address that had been destroyed. The driver asked if he was sure that that was the address as it was just a vacant lot to which the passenger replied by asking, am I dead? Number 4. The Red Room Curse The Red Room Curse is a Japanese urban legend that originated from an interactive Adobe Flash horror animation uploaded to GeoCities in the late 1990s. The legend tells the story of a pop-up ad that appears on the victim's computer screen displaying a black text that reads, do you like question mark on a red background. After trying to close the pop-up, it reappears with a new message that reads, Do you like the Red Room? Before the screen just turns completely red, displaying a list of names of the Red Room victims. This is when the victim senses a mysterious presence behind them before losing consciousness and later being found dead in a room with blood painted walls. The legend gained notoriety in 2004 when a 12 year old schoolgirl was murdered by an 11 year old classmate known as Girl A in Sasebo. It was reported that Girl A was a fan of the Red Room Curse animation and had the video bookmarked on her computer at the time of her death. And of course, this incident led to widespread discussion and fear for this curse. Then in 2016, a short film titled The Red Room Curse was released and was inspired by this urban legend of course. The film brings the legend to life and is sure to give anyone who watched it a chilling experience. So if you guys kind of want to know what this Red Room is about, watch this film because it will give you all the insights. Number 3. The Ushioni The world of Japanese mythology is full of terrifying creatures, but none are quite as fearsome as the Ushioni, also known as the Ox Demon. This class of monster is found near bodies of water and is known for its savage and cruel nature. Although there are different types of Ushioni, they all share similar traits that make them unmistakable. Perhaps the most terrifying thing about these monsters is their unsatiable appetite for human flesh. Then on top of that, they breathe toxic poison, making them even more deadly. The Ushioni is not to be trifled with as well, and many people who have encountered one have not lived to tell the tale. It is worth mentioning that the Ushioni is not always a solitary creature either. They are known to work together with other yokai or supernatural creatures such as the Nuraona and the Isoona. These yokai use their charms to lure unsuspecting men towards the water where the Ushioni is waiting to pounce and make a meal of its victims. The appearance of the Ushioni is quite unique and interesting as well. Much of them resemble an ox from the head up, but their body is a demonic horror. However, there are many variations on this theme including one with a spider like body, another one with a cat like body, and even one with the body of a kimono clad human. Pretty terrifying. 
Number two, the cursed Kleenex commercial. In 1986, Kleenex released a commercial in Japan that sparked a series of disturbing urban legends. The ad featured a woman in white and an ogre looking child sitting on a pile of hay and enjoying Kleenex issues, all while singing the song It's a Fine Day by Jane and Barden played in the background. Almost instantly after the commercial was aired, TV stations and Kleenex corporate allegedly began receiving complaints about the ad, with many people finding unsettling. Some claim that the entire film crew met untimely deaths in freak accidents following this, while others said that the child in the commercial had passed away immediately after filming this. There are also rumors that the actress Kaiko Matsuzaka had either passed away or even been committed to a psychiatric hospital. Others claim that when the ad came on at night, the singer's voice in the commercial transformed from that of a young soprano to a raspy old woman's. And the ad was so unsettling to the public that Kleenex eventually pulled it off air and replaced it with a completely different one. At our number one spot, we have the Kaikoji Temple. This place has nothing really scary about it, except the fact that it has mummified bodies on display. Okay, maybe it's a bit scary. These mummified figures are known as the Shukumbutsu, also known as the Living Buddha or Buddha Mummies. These are in fact real people, and these are the bodies of the priests who belong to the Shingon sect of Japanese Buddhism. All these mummies we see are priests who made the drastic decision in self-mummification. And I don't know what it is, but there's something about a body that being fully intact for hundreds of years that makes it so creepy. The process for the mummification would actually be very intense as well, and for the first 1000 days, and it would go a little something like this. For the first 1000 days, they would do extreme fasting and exercising, then on the next 1000 days, they would reduce their diet to a bare minimum in order to fit in this thing. The last 1,000 days would consist of entombment, basically many would bury themselves alive, essentially while in a deep state of meditation in order to reach enlightenment. At a number 10 spot, we have the Kaikoji Temple. This place has nothing really scary about it, except the fact that it has mummified bodies on display. Okay, maybe it is a bit scary. These mummified figures are known as the Sukinbutsu, also known as the Living Buddha or Buddha Mummies. These are in fact real people, and these are the bodies of the priests who belong to the Shingon sect of the Japanese Buddhism. All the mummies we see are priests who made the drastic decision to self-mummification. Just something about a body that is fully intact for hundreds of years that makes it so creepy. The process for mummification would actually be pretty intense. For the first 1,000 days, they would do extreme fasting and exercising. Then in the next 1,000 days, they would reduce their diet to a bare minimum. The last 1,000 days would consist of entombment, basically meaning that they would bury themselves alive, essentially while in a deep state of meditation, in order to reach enlightenment. At a number 9 spot, we have a devil sighting. Somewhere in Asia during the night, a driver encountered one of the creepiest looking people on the road. It's hard to explain, so it's best to see what I'm talking about. In the video, we see a young woman with long dark hair sitting in the middle of the road. As she notices the camera, she starts to walk backwards towards the car and then begins to pick up her pace. This is when the car is like, yup, no, I'm out of here. Many claim that what you see in the video is in fact a real devil, while others claim it's a deliberate prank. But who goes this far for a prank? Like, really? At number 8 spot, we have the Casablanca Tunnel. This is considered to be Indonesia's most haunted tunnel. It is located in the Basuki Rahat Street near Kunian area, and although there is nothing documented about this bridge, it is believed to be built sometime in the 1980s. The tunnel's location used to be a graveyard, so... During construction, they planned to relocate it, but did so improperly. So you kind of see where this goes. It's said that this caused many of the spirits to come out of their eternal rest. Although other tunnels have their own fair share of accidents, the ones that happen in the Casablanca tunnel are quite different. Drivers who were caught in accidents all claim seeing a woman walking across the street, causing them to crash in the first place. The woman is known as the Red Robe Lady, and as the name suggests, she would be seen walking the tunnel in her red robe. It is said that this is the ghost of a woman whose grave was disturbed and has been there ever since. At a number 7 spot, we have the paranormal taxi. When a taxi driver in Japan was dropping off their passenger, their dash cam captures something paranormal. To the driver, the car ride was completely normal, but to us, we can see the dash cam footage, there was nothing normal about it. He is seen driving under a bridge when what it looks like a ghost appears in the back seat of the car. The figure seems to linger around for a while, while at one point having what looks like a smile on its face. Then suddenly, after a bit, the figure just vanishes.
いや、飛んでる、入り込んでる。Now, some say that it's a reflection of the lights in the tunnel, but I don't really know how much I believe that. And not to mention how the figure just disappears for a bit, then c o m e back when the driver is no longer in the tunnel. At a number six spot, we have the Devil's Bend at Old Upper Thompson Road. The creepy road is said to be haunted by the spirits of drivers who unfortunately pass away while trying to navigate this tricky road bend. The story goes that it is part of the race route of the original Singapore Grand Prix, which was held from 1961 to 1974 until it was discontinued due to its high fatality rate. The poorly lit stretch is still a favorite haunt for illegal street racers and thrill seekers. The most recent accident claimed the lives of two passengers when the car. They're traveling in plunge into a ditch in 2008. Now it's not really hard to get here because it's just a road, so you're more than welcome to drive here. Right in the hump of our list, we have Khao Lak. Khao Lak is a beautiful seaside town in, in Pongna province. In 2004, it was all but destroyed by a devastating tsunami. While many places in several countries suffered fatalities and damage after the huge earthquake in the Indian Ocean, Khao Lak saw Thailand's greatest loss of life. It is estimated that at least 4,000 people perished on December 26, 2004. The resort has risen from the debris, with homes, hotels, and businesses gradually being rebuilt and repaired. Many Thai people believe that the coastal region is haunted by the tsunami's victims, and guests have reported strange occurrences in many local hotels. Others have even reported that human hands have tried to grab them while they're swimming near the coastlines where this tragedy struck. So, maybe not the best place to go for vacation. I don't know. At number four spot, we have the Bayoki Sky Hotel. Located in what was once the tallest building in Bangkok, the Bayoki Sky Hotel is one of the highest hotels in Southeast Asia. It towers over much of the city at 88 stories tall. However, in 2012, there was a tragic accident during the construction of the tower, whereby three workers plummeted to their deaths. Perhaps enraged by unsafe equipment and working practices, the souls are now said to haunt the high class hotel. Guests and staff members alike have reported a variety of strange happenings. These include mysteriously moving objects and even creepy shadows in the darkness. Even websites like TripAdvisor and Google Reviews talk about many of the supernatural encounters they've had in the hotel. These reviews suggest that the ghosts report poltergeist activity, which includes having their items moved around the room aggressively, shadow figures in the dark corners of the rooms, and having the feeling of being watched and not alone. I know it doesn't make sense financially, but I feel like they should just close down a hotel after more than a few deaths have occurred there. Because I swear every hotel is haunted because of that nowadays. At our number three spot, we have the Jingxi. Also known as the Chinese hopping vampire, the Jingxi comes from a phrase meaning stiff corpse. There are psychic vampire zombies, yes, you heard that right, who feeds off a person's qi rather than their blood. And for those who don't know, qi is considered to be a person's life force, which means that it's the energy that flows through and your entire body, basically giving you life in a sense. So, unlike the vampires we have over here, the Xingxi prefers not to consume humans or our blood, and they also aren't able to walk, so they are seen hopping around with their hands out front to maintain their balance. Many believe these creatures are created following a violent death, an improper burial, use of supernatural powers, or you just got bit by another vampire. Don't get it confused, this is the horror hybrid of the century. At number two spot, we have Mount Osori. This is one of Japan's most sacred sites, and for a good reason. It's claimed by many to be one of the entrances to hell. First, the temple lies on top of a volcanic plain, and as you roam the area, you will constantly pick up the scent of sulfur, which is already eerie because this is the smell of ghosts and devils supposedly. But volcanic reasons also make sense. According to Buddhist monks, they say this place resembles the description of hell and also paradise, so this is why they believe this is the spirit hub. Around the area are also these little Jizo statues. 
These were used to guide people who were lost, especially for children to keep and take with them for safety. Parents who have lost their children bring pebbles to the site as an offering for their kids to easily go through the afterlife. Except many of the pebbles left are often left broken and many a place of blame on evil demons in the area. They even have a festival at the shrine where blind women named Etaku bring messages from the afterlife back to the living. So best believe there are quite a few spirits here waiting to communicate with. At a number one spot we have the Tugu Complex. In the city of Malang are three schools who were in deep connection with the horrors committed in World War II. Back in 1940s, these three schools were used as concentration camps by the opposing Japanese soldiers. The Japanese created an underground system of crawl spaces and secret rooms that connect each school along with the local train station and governor's office. This would ensure accessibility everywhere. Legends say that these two teenagers attempted to explore these tunnels and secret passageways, but after a short time, one student came back screaming while the other student was found weeks later in the train station in a trance-like state and he was unable to speak about the horrors he saw. Many believe he saw the ghosts of those who lost their lives in World War II. Another occurrence is the blood stains on the floor tiles in each building. And the odd thing is, workers say that removing these stains are nearly impossible and some would even fall ill after trying to complete the job. At a number 10 spot, we have the Silent Hill series. Probably the most iconic one on this list, the Silent Hill series is one of the most disturbing nightmare situations in a game. The music, the atmosphere, the story, the monsters, it seems like this game took over the horror genre and just made it its own. Silent Hill was published by Konami back in 1999. It is a psychological horror franchise and much of the game deals with the actions people take and the way they justify it using guilt, anger, or manifesting it to be something bigger. So just to make things clear, the first four games of this series were created by Japanese developers and this includes Silent Hill, Silent Hill 2, Silent Hill 3, and Silent Hill 4 The Room. Konami Computer Entertainment Tokyo had various developmental groups and Team Silent was the one who developed these specific four games. At a number 9 spot we have Fatal Frame series. If you are looking for a game that implements Japanese culture, folklore with horror wrapped up in a nice story then maybe Fatal Frame is for you. Fatal Frame or Zero in Japan is a survival game horror franchise with 5 installments, 2 spin-offs, two special editions and a whole remake. These horrific games were developed by Japanese video game developers Tecmo, who has also released games like Dead or Alive, Deception or Star Force. The game has you playing as a single character walking around a haunted location looking for clues and fighting ghosts with only a camera. It's called the Camera Obscura and it's able to take pictures that normal humans can't see, kind of like a third eye to see spirits. Set in the 1980s Japan, this game takes place in Himura Mansion, where it's said that every 10 years a ritual involving a sacrifice a young girl would take place. They would do this by detaching her from all worldly needs before sending her to the afterlife. Except one year it all failed because the young girl fell in love. This caused the family to believe they had dishonored themselves and the family, in which caused each and every single one of them to take their own life away by a traditional Japanese katana. Now their souls are trapped in this mansion for you to explore. At number 8 spot we have The Evil Within. This is a game that is a very skilled reliant game in that every action and decision you take will actively change the world around you. So at times this game is pretty terrifying. The Evil Within or Cycle Break in Japan is a survival horror game developed by Tangle Gameworks and published by Bethesda Softworks. It was released in October 2014 and released virtually on every single platform including PC, PlayStation and Xbox. I'm sorry Nintendo users. The story follows a guy named Sebastian who has to navigate himself through different chapters filled with these horrifying creatures and realistic needs such as the need for resources in this game. Trust me, you need to find resources. But other than that, the real horror of this game comes from the whole atmosphere it sets in the Beacon Mental Hospital where a mass murder took place and the psychological effects you get with every decision you make. At number 7 spot we have Yamarari Night Alone. Yamorari is a puzzle solving survival horror game developed by Nippon Ichi Software. The game I will be talking about is only one game of the Yamari series. Being released in October of 2015, the game received a lot of international praise. The story follows two young girls, Yu and Haru, who are headed home before they got separated by a vicious attacker. As the two get lost, they have to navigate themselves back home, but the path they travel is much more terrifying than their usual. You will be playing as both the girls and each decision you make will impact the other girl. 
The way this game uses sound effects and lighting to emphasize their scares gives them a spot on this list for sure. Not to mention the unique and interesting ways to get through each of the stage of this game. This game is really worth the buy. At number 6 spot we have The Calling. I kinda threw shade at Nintendo on my last point so I had to mention one of their exclusives on this list. We have the game The Calling or Kuroki Kokushin as it is in Japan. This survival horror game was developed by Hudson Soft and released on November 19, 2009. This game is extremely underrated on this list and I personally think it deserves a spot for a lot of you guys to notice at least in the horror section of gaming. The game would use your Nintendo Wii controller as a telephone and would randomly ring throughout the game. On the other end would be spirits, ghosts, demons which is already scary of a concept if you ask me. Obviously the controller could also be used to interact with objects around but definitely the phone idea props to them. The game follows a group of characters exploring Mnemonic Abyss which is a place between life and death and from here they experience restless ghosts and creepy phone rings from spirits. On the hump of our list we have Bloodborne. Created by the renowned Japanese developer From Software, Bloodborne is just as hard as its counterparts Dark Soul and Elden Ring from the same developer. Except Bloodborne definitely takes its spot as one of the most terrifying games along with its extreme difficulty. Released as a PS4 exclusive back in 2015, Bloodborne follows a hunter who's in charge of cleaning up the mess that a disease has caused on the citizens of Yarnum, causing them to be these oversized, super powered humans almost godlike. And yeah, lots of blood, lots and lots of blood. This gothic inspired city harbors some of the most cruel enemies ever shown in horror games along with the creepy atmosphere that follows you throughout the entirety of the game. My favorite thing about this game that sets them apart from others on this list is definitely their combat system. There are so many different weapon types that only add up to so many different combat strategies. This game allows you to go crazy and pull off combos which is always something fun to do. And this definitely beats poking and weaving around the whole time. <coughs> Dark Souls. <coughs> At number 4 spot we have Shadow Corridor. This survival indie game was created by a single man named Kazuki Joma using the infamous Unreal Engine 4. It was released as a free to play on June 21st, 2017. In the beginning you start off as a normal person walking happy across multiple old valleys of Japan. This until you get into a tunnel that transports you into a nightmare in a pure spirit away style. Inside this nightmare you have to confront a world full of apparitions, no mask and demons and creatures. As well you have to collect items to survive and get to solve the mystery behind this nightmarish world. Another great point in favor of this game is that in order to unravel all of its secrets you are going to be spending lots of hours finding hidden items, hidden rooms, collecting all special items, running against the clock to finish the stage, all sorts of things. All the way out of number 3 spot we have Siren Blood Curse. Siren Blood Curse or as it's known in Japan as Siren New Translation is a stealth based survival horror game developed by Sony's Japan studio. It was exclusive for PlayStation so once again Xbox fans have another one of those games that will never see the light of day. The game was later released in 2008. The story begins on August 3rd 2007 and focuses on an American television crew that arrives in Japan to investigate and document the legend of Hanuda, a vanished village where human sacrifice are said to have taken place 30 years prior. The atmosphere in this game is very unique as well and at a time in this game the Japanese village was stuck in a hell like time loop and would often go split screen to show the two worlds of the living and the dead. The game was a remake of the American version so it used a lot of Caucasian characters and voice actors despite its Japanese origin. This is definitely another unrated Japanese horror game on this list and if you like being sneaky and quiet in a horror game this one might be for you. At our number 2 spot we have The Corpse Party. Another one of this list created by a single person, Corpse Party was published in 1996 spring and it was made by 22 year old college student Makota Kaduan. Corpse Party is a survival horror game and adventure game that follows a group of friends performing a ritual except this would instead send them to another dimension where they would be tormented by the ghosts of other children. During the game you must be able to go through psychological and emotional screwing scenes and a story that will make you question your insanity at times. Along with a terrifying ambience, constant jump scares, unique puzzle, this game will definitely not disappoint. 
The reason I love this game so much is because it actually plays out like a visual novel almost. The character development and dialogue is what pushes this game to be one of the top contenders in the horror genre. And a great thing I appreciate is that they do add light moments to add relief as this game will literally have you scared the whole time you play it. At our number one spot we have the Clock Tower 3. I couldn't finish this list without adding one of the Japan's most iconic horror games Clock Tower 3. Clock Tower 3 is a survival horror game that is co-produced by both Capcom and Sunsoft and made as an exclusive for PlayStation 2. The plot follows 14 year old Alyssa as she tries to escape the menacing clock tower and the slaves inside of it. The majority of the game is played without the use of a weapon relying instead of your ability to run through or dodge foes. The game has good graphics, mood and scripting despite some repetitive mechanics and overall commercial failure. The fear comes from a general lack of ability to defend oneself and the ensuing dependency on fleeing or figuring out puzzles. The pressure is to come up with a solution as soon as possible before it's too late. Coming in at our number 10 spot we have Radiation Man. This is the story of a man who was kept alive for 83 days just so doctors could see the effects of radiation and how long a human could last. In 1999, three technicians at a nuclear power plant in Japan were involved in a catastrophic accident that left one of them, Hishashi Uchi, with the highest dose of radiation any human has ever experienced. Uchi along with Masato Shinohara and Yutaka Yakokoa were working at a plant when a nuclear reaction occurred, emitting neutron radiation and gamma rays all over the place. As a result, Uchi received a devastating 17 sieverts of radiation, while Shinohara and Yogokawa received fatal doses of 10 and 3 three sieverts respectively. The effects of radiation on Uchi were immediate and severe, causing burns and completely damaging his internal organs and immune system. Despite being treated by a team of top medical professionals from around the world, Uchi's condition continued to deteriorate. He underwent numerous skin transplants and was kept alive through the use of blood and fluids, including drugs and life support. Tragically, on the 59th day of treatment, Uchi's heart stopped three times in just 49 minutes, causing severe damage to his brain and his kidneys. He eventually passed away on December 21st, 1999 due to multi-organ failure, spending the final 83 days of his life in intense pain and suffering. At our number 9 spot, we have the Unit 731. Yup, this story is terrible. Unit 731 was a Japanese biological warfare research unit that operated in China during World War II. It was headquartered in a facility in the Pingfan district located in China and they conducted experiments on human subjects in order to test the effectiveness on biological weapons and even study the effects of various diseases. The unit was established in 1936 and operated until the end of the war in 1945. It was led by Shiro Ishii, a Japanese army doctor, and was composed of several hundred scientists and medical professionals. The unit conducted a wide range of experiments on human subjects, including prisoners of war and civilians, often without their consent or even their knowledge. Some of the experiments conducted by Unit 731 included infecting subjects with diseases such as the bubonic plague, cholera, and typhoid fever. They would also study the effects of frostbite by deliberately exposing subjects to extreme cold and performing surgeries on live subjects without any sort of anesthesia. As a result, many of the subjects died in these experiments and the unit is believed to have killed thousands of people during its operation. After the war, many of the members of Unit 731 were granted immunity from prosecution in an exchange for sharing the data they had collected with the United States. This decision has been heavily criticized, obviously, as it allowed the perpetrators of these atrocities to evade accountability for their actions. However, in more recent years, the Chinese government did call for Japan to take responsibility for this Unit 731 and to provide compensation to the victims and their families. The Chinese government was also called for the unit's activities to be recognized as war crimes and for the perpetrators to be held accountable once and for all. At a number 8 spot we have the elevator man. Apparently some time ago in a towering skyscraper located in Korea, there was a young woman named Karuko. She was a very bright 19 year old student who lived in the 14th floor of her building, but on one fateful night she had an experience in an elevator that would change her life. As the elevators began to close, a handsome stranger managed to slip his hand in order to stop them. The man stepped inside of the elevator and stood very close to Karuko. This is when the two began to flirt and engage in very small talk. The stranger told her he lived on the 13th floor, just one floor below her. As the elevator approached the 13th floor and the man walked out, the man suddenly turned around, turned to Karuko and said, I'll see you upstairs. He then pulled out a knife as he left, he laughed and then disappeared towards the staircase. The doors of the elevator then shut, leaving Karuko alone and afraid. As the elevator continued to 
climbed to the 14th floor, Kruko frantically pressed every button trying to get it to stop. But it was all in vain. The elevator doors finally opened up on the 14th floor, and to Kuruko's terror, she found the man waiting for her. She was tragically slain before she could even scream for help, and since then, many have claimed this is a true story, and it's said to be the explanation why elevators now have this stop button. Some even say that the man who killed Kuruko still roams the halls of this building, trying to lure innocent people into the elevator with him. And also, there is a game I mentioned in a lot of my past videos, which include this story. And this is basically the origin story to that. So if you ever want to know more, just search up the elevator game online and you can even play this yourself. At a number 7 spot, we have the P-40 ghost plane. In 1942, American radar detected a strange aircraft approaching their territory from Japan. Although it appeared to be an airplane, it did not have the typical markings of an aerial attack. The American military dispatched two pilots to intercept the mysterious plane. As they approached it, they discovered that the aircraft was a P-40, and they were surprised to find that it bore markings that had not been used since the Pearl Harbor attack. Additionally, they observed that the plane was in very poor condition, with bullet holes riddling the fuselage and the landing gear completely blown away. The pilots were amazed that the plane was even able to fly in the first place. However, they were shocked to find the pilot slumped in the cockpit, wearing a flight suit stained with fresh blood. When the pilots looked through the window, the pilot raised his hand slightly and turned toward them, offering a meek wave. Shortly thereafter, the plane crashed to the ground with a deafening roar. American troops arrived at the crash site, but found no evidence of the pilot or any identifying markings from the plane. Researchers later found a diary at the crash site that helped them to determine that the plane must have come from Mindanao, which was an island a thousand miles away. The rest of the story still remains a complete mystery. Some have speculated that the plane may have been downed over a year earlier, and the pilot managed to survive on his own in the wild. He could have scavenged parts from other downed aircraft, repaired his airplane, and then navigated his way back to the homeland through hostile territory. However, the mystery remains as to how heavy the P-40 aircraft could have taken off without any sort of landing gear. Japanese records confirm that an American P-40 flew over Formosa on December 8th, 1942, but where it came, where it was headed, and how it even got airborne still remains a mystery. Add a number six spot with the Maria Labo. Marie Labo was a woman from the province of Capiz in the Philippines who had a happy family consisting of a loving husband and one son. However, she decided to work abroad in England for the sake of her family's financial stability. Maria was lucky enough to have a good employer who treated her well, but she didn't know that her employer was a vampire, supposedly. It was said that Maria was a combination of a maid and a caregiver to this vampire employer, who would always provide her with half-cooked liver to eat. After a few months of working for him, Maria started to feel sick. Little did she know that she has ingested some of her employer's blood, which caused her this unknown illness. Eventually, Maria decided to return home to the Philippines to live with her family. Upon returning home, Maria's husband, who was a police officer, Officer was very surprised to see her. She had already prepared dinner, but when her husband asked where their son was, Maria just replied, our son is right there. Her husband was confused, and it wasn't until he opened the refrigerator that he realized the horrific truth. The meat he had eaten that day was their own son. In a fit of rage, Maria's husband picked up a large knife and slashed her face, leaving a large scar, which is why she was called Maria Labo. Labo means scar in Filipino. From that day on, Maria went on a murderous rampage and stalked or hunted in many different locations within the Philippines. However, her husband continued to hunt for Maria because he just wanted to kill her and end all of this. It is also said that whenever Maria was known to be in any place within the Philippines, people would try to find and kill her in order to save her own children. So there would be this large hunt out for her and it would just be crazy. In the hub for list, we have the Hello Kitty murders. Our story begins in May 1999 when a 13-year-old girl approached the Hong Kong police, claiming that a woman whom her boyfriend had helped to kill was haunting her. The police was initially skeptical, but when the girl described how a 23-year-old woman was brutally tortured and bound with electrical wire in a third floor flat on Granville Road 31, they knew they had to investigate. As they searched the apartment, they uncovered some truly horrifying evidence, a large Hello Kitty doll that had been stuffed with a woman's head. The victim of this ghastly crime was Fan Man Yi, a 23-year-old nightclub hostess who has been abducted for over a year, allegedly for failing to repay a $20,000 debt. 
According to the various media reports, Fan was held captive for over a month, during which time she was subjected to brutal torture on a daily basis until she eventually succumbed to her injuries. The men responsible for her death then chopped up the body into tiny pieces and disposed of it with the garbage. Some versions of the story claim that they even skinned her and boiled her. Although this is difficult to confirm, what is even more terrifying is that her severed head was sewn inside of a Hello Kitty doll, which became the bizarre story for this tragic accident, the Hello Kitty murder. When the news of this gruesome murder hit the press, it horrified residents of Hong Kong and sparked a media frenzy that lasted for months. As if the story couldn't get any more chilling, there was even reports of a shadowy female figure lurking near the apartment building where this happened, and it was captured on various CCTV cameras from nearby buildings. At our number 4 spot, we have the Tugu Complex. In the city of Malang are three schools who are in deep connection with the horrors committed in World War II. Back in the 1940s, these three schools were used as concentration camps by the opposing Japanese soldiers. The Japanese created an underground system of crawl spaces and secret rooms that connected each school along with the local train station and governor's office. This would ensure accessibility everywhere. Legend says that two teenagers attempted to explore these tunnels and secret passageways, but after a short time, one student came out screaming while the other one was found weeks later in the train station in a trance-like state and unable to speak about the horrors he saw. Many believe it was the ghost of those who lost their lives there in World War II. Another occurrence is the blood stains on the floor tiles in each of these buildings. And the odd thing is, is that workers say that removing these stains are nearly impossible, and some would even fall ill after completing the cleanup job, which is why they have stopped doing it completely. At a number 3 spot, we are the Orang Minyak. The Orang Minyak, or the Oily Man, is a creature that takes the shape of a man that is covered in a thick murky black oil. It comes at the darkest time of night when it's almost impossible to see. It snatches young women in rural villages when they're sleeping, and this is why many people fear oil spills in the country, oddly enough. It can shapeshift into oil to slip through cracks in the walls and the floors, so there's basically no place to hide from the Orang Minyak. In Malaysia's past, young women were told to wear clothing that was worn by a man so that this creature couldn't catch their scent. Keeping a mirror nearby it was also a must because this creature doesn't like to see their own reflection. This became such a big urban legend that some girls would cover their rooms in all mirrors, but in my opinion, that is just as creepy as this creature. Number 2, the Karak Highway. This Malaysian highway is said to be the world's most haunted highway. It is a 70 kilometer long interstate highway that connects Kuala Lumpur to the Genting Highlands. The amount of paranormal reports from this highway alone is enough to make someone take a way longer detour instead. The first of these incidents happened when a couple and their baby were returning one night from vacation. The car then suddenly broke down on the side of the road, and as he looked for someone to help, he notices the highway was completely empty. So he walks up to the closest nearby phone booth to call for help, but the man never ended up returning. After a few hours of waiting, his wife calls the police, but when they arrive, they tell her to not step out of the vehicle and to not look behind them. After walking a distance away, she turns around to see her husband's headless body being devoured by a banshee-like creature on top of their car. Also on Croc Highway, if you find yourself stuck behind a yellow Volkswagen Beetle, just get away from it. This vehicle is known to stalk drivers and even cause them to get into fatal accidents. So be extra careful if you guys decide to drive near this area in Malaysia. At a number one spot, we have the Mongolian Death Worm. The Gobi Desert, located between Mongolia and China, is said to have a Mongolian Death Worm, otherwise known as an intestine worm, due to its appearance of being fleshy and red in color. This two to seven foot long creature has the ability to spit out venomous liquid out of its mouth. And if you ever get close enough to touch the creature, it is believed that the entire body is covered in a sticky poisonous substance that will kill you on touch. And if that wasn't enough, it can even electrify you the same way an eel can. While movies on the creature depicted as being this large colossal being, it's actually believed to be a lot smaller at around 7 feet. Regardless, the fact that this creature can hide anywhere in the desert sands and come out with basically no weaknesses makes it one of the most dangerous and scariest ones on this list. Coming in at a number 10 spot, we have the Elevator Game. The Elevator Game is a mysterious and potentially dangerous ritual that is said to bring you to another world. This game has its origins in Japan and is played by entering an elevator in a public building with at least 10 floors. 
the player must press specific buttons in a specific order without anyone entering or even leaving the elevator in order to reach this other world. In the other world, electronics do not work, the lights are off, and all that can be seen from the windows is a red cross in the distance. To return back to the original world, the players must repeat the sequence of button presses and be very vigilant of their surroundings. The player must be careful not to look at the woman who enters the elevator on the fifth floor as she is not human. If someone enters or even leaves the elevator during the ritual, the players must start over. And you must be wondering what the specific ritual is, but if you guys actually want to know about that, search it up because I'm not going to say it for you guys because I don't want you guys doing this. Because for those who have played, it is said that if they faint or lose consciousness during the ritual, they may wake up in their own home. But they must be careful to examine their surroundings as it may not be the same home they left. It is important to not attempt this ritual too many times as well as it can lead to an accidental slipping between both worlds. And it's also worth mentioning that if the woman does not enter the elevator or the players do not reach the 10th floor, they should immediately return to the first floor and completely end the game. At our number 9 spot, we have the Rokurokubi, the long neck demon. The legend of the Rokurokubi is a supernatural creature from Japanese mythology that originated during the Edo period, which is 1603 to 1867. The Rokurobi is a beautiful woman by day, but at night she undergoes a metamorphosis where her neck extends and she begins to hunt. Some versions of this legend says that this creature can be recognized by small white marks on their neck, or even by the way they sleep with their head far from their body. But in reality, when I see photos of this, all I can think is, if they got a long neck, they're probably this creature. According to folklore, however, there are different explanations for the origin of this creature. Some believe they were once Buddhists who broke the religion's principles and were then cursed as punishment, while other people believe, while other people see the transformation as a supernatural expression of the person's desires. There are also legends that suggest they are Oni, which are these Japanese demons seeking revenge or even simply just playing tricks on humans. And it's also worth mentioning that this creature comes in many different forms, with female ones attacking men and male ones attacking women. The Nukekubi is one of the most dangerous forms, however, known for its detached head that just flies around and attacks its prey. At a number 8 spot, we have Hitobashira. Hitobashira, also known as Human Pillars, is a custom of human sacrifice that was once practiced in Japan. It involved burying a victim alive under or near large-scale buildings such as dams, bridges, and castles. The practice was believed to appease the gods and protect the structure from natural disasters and enemy attacks. The practice was believed to appease the gods and protect the structure from natural disasters and enemy attacks. The tradition of human sacrifice in Japan dates back to the construction of aristocratic tombs in ancient times. The the use of human pillars persisted in various parts of Japan until the 16th century. Legend has it that the Maruoka Castle, one of the oldest surviving castles in Japan, was built with the help of a human pillar named Oshizu. When the stone wall of the castle kept collapsing, a vassal suggested the use of a human sacrifice, Oshizu, who is this one-eyed woman living in poverty who volunteered to even become this human pillar in the first place. But she did this under one condition, and that one condition being that one of her sons was turned into a samurai. She was buried under the central pillar of the castle keep, and the construction was successfully completed. However, her son was not made a samurai, and thus her spirit has caused moat to overflow with spring rain every single year, and some people even report to see her ghost when they enter and visit this castle. As a result, people erected a small tomb to soothe her spirit, and a poem was even handed down about the rain caused by the tears of Oshizu's sorrow. It is speculated that the instability of the walls of the Maroka castle was due to the design of the castle in the first place, which is more indicative of earlier fortresses. On the other hand, the Matsu castle is also rumored to have been constructed on human sacrifice buried under the castle stone walls. The victim was a beautiful young maiden who is fond of dancing and is referred to as the Maiden of the Matsu. After the castle was built, a law was passed forbidding any girl to dance in the streets of Matsu because the hill Oshiruyama would shudder and the castle would shake from top to bottom. Although this practice has not been continued, it's just crazy to think that this was actually done and some of the pillars in Japan actually contain real human sacrifice. At our number 7 spot, we have the Kisaragi Station. In 2004, a 2chan user named Hasumi posted on a thread asking for help because she got on the wrong train at Shin Hamatsu Station. This was rather strange because she usually caught the same train after work and trains in the station only go in one direction. She started getting really anxious because she remembered the stops only being a few minutes between each station, but on this specific train ride, they were just much longer. 
They even went through a tunnel, but her usual line didn't go through any sort of tunnel. She walked to the front car to ask the conductor for help, but the curtain was closed and no one answered. She then knocked on the door, but that's when the train suddenly stopped at Kisaragi station. As she left the train, she was filled with huge anxiety and fear, but as she tried to go back, the train door shut on her. As all this was happening, she was messaging people on this discussion board on 4chan about the station, but when they all replied, they had said that no such station existed in Japan. She decided to exit the station and walk back along the tracks, even back through the tunnel she had gone through under earlier. She reported strange sounds like drums in the distance, and even a voice telling her that walking on the tracks is extremely dangerous. As she grew more afraid, she turned back to go around, but she saw an old man with one leg, which then slowly disappeared right after. When she finally got out of the tunnel, a man came up offering help and to drive her to the nearest station. This is when she posted on the thread for the very last time, saying that the man was muttering to himself, then her phone died, and she was never heard from the thread again. At a number 6 spot with the 1932 Shirokiya department store. On December 16, 1932, tragedy struck the Shirokiya department store in Japan during their year end Christmas theme sale. The festive decorations of the season turned into a nightmare as a fire broke out of the toy section just a few minutes before the store was about to open. The fire quickly spread to floors 4 and 8, filling the staircase with smoke and cutting off major escape routes. This left many shoppers and employees stranded on the upper floors, desperate for a way to find safety. Some of those who were trapped made makeshift ropes from clothing or curtains and climbed down to safety. Others were not so lucky. They instead fell to their deaths or even suffocated in the smoke-filled building. In total, 14 people lost their lives and 67 were injured in the Shirokiya department store fire. In the aftermath of the fire, stories and legends began to circulate about the tragedy. One particularly interesting legend related to the traditional dress of the saleswoman in the store. At the time, it was customary for women who wore traditional kimonos to go without panties. According to this urban legend, some of the saleswomen in kimonos who were trapped on the upper floors chose not to jump the safety nets that had been set up below because they were just ashamed to not be seen below without underwear. While there is no real proof that this legend actually existed, it is said to have led on to an increase in the popularity of western style panties in Japan, which is both odd and kind of terrifying at the same time. I don't know what to think. In the hub for a list, we have the ghost taxi passengers. After the devastating 311 earthquake and tsunami that hit the northeastern Japan coast, sightings of yuri or ghosts have increased drastically in cities like Ishinomaki in Miyagi Prefecture. As these spirits have not been properly put to rest, some may have not even been aware that they are dead and are often searching for a way home. As a result, taxi drivers all over this place have long been subject to ghostly encounters in the form of passengers trying to go home or to a very specific place. This has almost become a norm for taxi drivers around Japan to be asked if they had ever had a ghostly passenger before. Tohoku Gaoin University conducted a study called the Awakened Spiritual Earthquake Studies that involved interviews with more than 100 Ishinomaki taxi drivers who had supernatural encounters. Many drivers reported picking up passengers who seemed to be wet or wearing winter coats in the summer, months after the disaster in the cold months of March. Most drivers reported running the meter and having to pay the fee for the vanished passenger. One particular driver reported a chilling story about a man in winter clothing whom he, whom he picked up in the summer who asked to be taken to an address that had been destroyed. The driver asked if he was sure that that was the address as it was just a vacant lot, to which the passenger replied by asking, am I dead? Number 4, The Red Room Curse The Red Room Curse is a Japanese urban legend that originated from an interactive Adobe Flash horror animation uploaded to GeoCities in the late 1990s. The legend tells the story of a pop-up ad that appears on the victim's computer screen displaying a black text that reads, do you like? question mark on a red background. After trying to close the pop-up, it reappears with a new message that reads, Do you like the Red Room? Before the screen just turns completely red, displaying a list of names of the Red Room victims. This is when the victim senses a mysterious presence behind them before losing consciousness and later being found dead in a room with blood painted walls. The legend gained notoriety in 2004 when a 12 year old schoolgirl was murdered by an 11 year old classmate known as Girl A in Sasebo. It was reported that Girl A was a fan of the Red Room Curse animation and had the video bookmarked on her computer at the time of her death. 
And of course, this incident led to widespread discussion and fear for this curse. Then in 2016, a short film titled The Red Room Curse was released and was inspired by this urban legend, of course. The film brings the legend to life and is sure to give anyone who watched it a chilling experience. So if you guys kind of want to know what this Red Room is about, watch this film because it'll give you all the insights. Number three, the Ushioni. The world of Japanese mythology is full of terrifying creatures, but none are quite as fearsome as the Ushioni, also known as the Ox Demon. This class of monster is found near bodies of water and is known for its savage and cruel nature. Although there are different types of Ushioni, they all share similar traits that make them unmistakable. Perhaps the most terrifying thing about these monsters is their unsatiable appetite for human flesh. Then on top of that, they breathe toxic poison, making them even more deadly. The Ushioni is not to be trifled with as well, and many people who have encountered one have not lived to tell the tale. It is worth mentioning that the Ushioni is not always a solitary creature either. They are known to work together with other yokai or supernatural creatures, such as the Nuraona and the Isoona. These yokai use their charms to lure unsuspecting men towards the water, where the Ushioni is waiting to pounce and make a meal of its victims. The appearance of the Ushioni is quite unique and interesting as well. Much of them resemble an ox from the head up, but their body is a demonic horror. However, there are many variations on this theme, including one with a spider-like body, another one with a cat-like body, and even one with the body of a kimono-clad human. Pretty terrifying. Number two, the cursed Kleenex commercial. In 1986, Kleenex released a commercial in Japan that sparked a series of disturbing urban legends. The ad featured a woman in white and an ogre looking child sitting on a pile of hay and enjoying Kleenex tissues, all while singing the song It's a Fine Day by Jane and Barden, played in the background. Almost instantly after the commercial was aired, TV stations and Kleenex corporate allegedly began receiving complaints about the ad, with many people finding unsettling. Some claim that the entire film crew met untimely deaths in freak accidents following this, while others said that the child in the commercial had passed away immediately after filming this. There are also rumors that the actress Kaiko Matsuzaka had either passed away or even been committed to a psychiatric hospital. Others claim that when the ad came on at night, the singer's voice in the commercial transformed from that of a young soprano to a raspy old woman's. And the ad was so unsettling to the public that Kleenex eventually pulled it off air and replaced it with a completely different one. At our number one spot, we have the Kaikoji Temple. This place has nothing really scary about it, except the fact that it has mummified bodies on display. Okay, maybe it's a bit scary. These mummified figures are known as the Shukumbutsu, also known as the Living Buddha or Buddha Mummies. These are in fact real people, and these are the bodies of the priests who belong to the Shingon sect of Japanese Buddhism. All these mummies we see are priests who made the drastic decision in self-mummification. And I don't know what it is, but there's something about a body that being fully intact for hundreds of years that makes it so creepy. The process for the mummification would actually be very intense as well, and for the first 1,000 days, and it would go a little something like this. For the first 1,000 days, they would do extreme fasting and exercising, then on the next 1,000 days, they would reduce their diet to a bare minimum in order to fit in this thing. The last 1,000 days would consist of entombment. Basically, many would bury themselves alive, essentially while in a deep state of meditation in order to reach enlightenment. Number 10, the cursed Kleenex commercial. In 1986, Kleenex released a commercial in Japan that has sparked a series of disturbing urban legends. The ad featured a woman in white and an ogre looking child sitting on a pile of hay and enjoying Kleenex tissues while the song It's a Fine Day by Jane and Barton played in the background. While almost instantly after the commercial was aired, TV stations and Kleenex corporate allegedly began receiving complaints about the ad, which many found very unsettling. Some people claim that the entire film crew met untimely deaths in freak accidents following this, while others said that the child in the commercial had passed away immediately after filming. There are also rumors that the actress Kaiku Matsuzaka had either passed away or been committed to a psychiatric hospital or even became pregnant with a demon baby following the commercial. Others claim that when the ad came on at night, the singer's voice in the commercial transformed from that of a young soprano to a raspy old woman's. And the ad became so unsettling to the public that Kleenex eventually pulled it and replaced it with a different one. However, after doing further research, Kaiku Matsuzaka, the girl in the video, is alive and well. And besides that, it's not that bad of an ad. 
or at least I think that. At a number nine spot, we have the Sony timer. The Sony timer, also known as a Sony kill switch, is a rumor feature that is said to exist in electronic devices produced by Sony. The feature was that Sony devices were equipped with a timer that causes the product to stop functioning after a predetermined period of time, forcing you to purchase a replacement. Considering the stuff we know about the Apple update slowing your phone down, this is really not a surprise now. Anyways, the legend of the Sony timer originated in Japan in the 1980s and early 1990s, and despite the lack of concrete evidence to support the myth, a significant portion of the Japanese population believed in it. The legend remained confined in Japan until 2006, when a recall of over 4 million Dell laptops equipped with defective Sony lithium batteries rekindled the legend of the Sony timer. And despite Sony's efforts to contain the rumor, it eventually came to the knowledge of consumers outside of Japan and had a negative impact on the sales of Sony VAIO laptop computers. Then more recently in 2021, the legend resurfaced once again when an anti-cheat measure in the PlayStation Network had the potential to render games unplayable on certain PlayStation consoles. But much of this is still speculation and such a thing is not confirmed whether or not it truly existed but we really know that they try to make our devices bad so they want us to buy a replacement. We all know that. At a number eight spot, we have the Alice killings. The Alice killings remain one of the most mysterious and unsolved serial killings in Japanese history. From 1999 to 2005, five killings took place, each with a calling card left at the scene by the killer. More specifically, a playing card with the word Alice would be written on it on the victim's blood. The victims were diverse, ranging from a restaurant owner, to a high school student, to a college student, to a nurse. However, they all shared the eerie and gruesome playing card left at the scene of their murders. The first victim, Sasaki Megumi, was a 29 year old restaurant owner known for her strong personality and excellent cooking. She was last seen alive walking home from a party and the next morning her body was found in the woods, torn apart and impaled on tree branches with the Jack of Spades card found in her mouth. The second victim, Yamane Akio, was a singer whose body was found in a bar, his vocal cords ripped out and a gunshot wound to the head. The King of Diamonds card was found in his hands. The third victim, Kai Sakura, was a high school student whose body was found in a shallow grave, mutilated and with a crown sewn onto her head. The Queen of Clubs card was found on a stick marking the grave. The fourth victim, Hasegawa Hiroki, was a college student whose body was found with the Ace of Spades card. The fifth and final victim, Takahashi Ayumi was a nurse whose body was found with the Joker card. After doing further research, fortunately this person never existed in Japan. But in reality, there was a serial killer who was caught that was using playing cards. Except it was in Spain, not Japan. They were caught in 2003 and sentenced to 142 years in prison. And not to worry, they do not have a pack of playing cards with them, nor will I think they will ever be allowed to play with cards ever again. Number 7, The Howling Inuwaki Tunnel. The legend of the Inuwaki Tunnel and the village has been a source of fascination in Japan for decades. Located in the remote mountains of the Fukuoka prefecture, the tunnel is said to be haunted by the ghost of those who went missing inside of it, and is only accessible through an abandoned village called the Inuwaki village. According to the legend, all who enter the village are doomed to a violent death, and the Japanese constitution does not apply there. The legend of the Inuwaki Tunnel and village may have been inspired by a real life murder that took place in the tunnel in 1988. According According to the story, a group of teams kidnapped, robbed, and tortured a young man before burning him alive in the tunnel. The tunnel being remote and rarely used by traffic was a popular spot for gangs and the brutal murder likely contributed to the creation of the legend in the first place. Today, the tunnel is considered one of the most haunted places in Japan, with large concrete bricks blocking its entrance, but that hasn't stopped adventurers from trying to enter it. Locals say that electronic devices and even their cars often break down when they're around this tunnel and that others sometimes hear the sounds of barking dogs and ghostly screams emanating from deep inside of the tunnel. The legend has inspired numerous films and books and other sorts of media including the 2020 film Howling Village from Juan creator Takashi Shimizu. Number 6, The Yaomaba. Ever wanted to take a hike in the mountains of Japan? Well, just be on the lookout for the Yaomaba, also known as the mountain witch who supposedly resides in these elevated regions of the country. Yaomaba is often depicted as an old woman with long unkept hair and a wild experience who lives in the mountains and is associated with the spirit world. According to the stories, this creature is a benevolent figure who helps lost travelers find their way home, while in other stories, she is portrayed as a malevolent being who lures people into the mountains and causes them to go missing. Some locals claim 
claimed that she was once a regular girl who ran into the mountains to escape false accusations. Here she grew angry and resentful and would eventually have cannibalistic tendencies along with practicing black magic. So on your next hike, don't be deceived by anyone you might come across because the amount of encounters with this creature leads me to believe that she's really up there in the mountains of Japan. Number 5, Kagomi Kagomi. Kagomi Kagomi is a Japanese children's game and in the game, a group of children joins hands and walks around in circles around a child who is chosen to be the oni or demon. The oni sits in the center of the circle with their eyes covered while the other children sing the Kagomi Kagomi song. When the song is over, the oni has to guess the name of the person standing directly behind them. This game takes a sinister twist when a group of people found themselves caught in the game on a foggy suspension bridge. In this case, the group was split into two cars, with the first car carrying three people and the second car carrying four people. So when they reach the bridge, it is already getting dark and the fog is not helping. The first car comes to a halt and the couple gets out, joining hands. They then climb over the railing of the bridge and throw themselves off much to the shock and horror of the other passengers. One of the other people in the car is found talking to themselves, repeatedly muttering the quote, mustn't go. The couple is later found dead and is ruled to have both taken their lives. When they ask the remaining survivors of the first car what happened, they say that a girl wearing kimono suddenly appeared in front of their car, causing them to stop. This is when they said that their car was encircled by a group of children who then began saying kagomi kagomi. The children were enticing the passengers to join hands with them and the couple eventually gave in while the manager was protected by religiously repeating the phrase, mustn't go. Number 4, The Red Room Curse The Red Room Curse is a legend that has long circulated on the internet in Japan with various versions of the story being told. At its core, the legend involves a mysterious pop-up ad that appears on a person's computer announcing their impending death. According to the most common version of the legend, while browsing the internet, the victim will be presented with a pop-up featuring a black text on a red background that says, do you like blank? When the victim tries to close the pop-up, it reappears with the text changed to, do you like the red? Red room and the screen turns red displaying a list of names of the red room's victims after seeing the pop-up the victim will sense a mysterious presence behind them and then lose consciousness they will later be found dead in their home with the walls of the room in which they are discovered painted red with blood the origins of the legend can be traced back to a Japanese interactive horror animation that was uploaded to GeoCities in the late 1990s however the legend gained notoriety in 2004 due to the Sasebo slashing a murder case involving a young girl girl who is a fan of the animation and had the video bookmarked on her computer at the time of the murder. So there is some truth to this. But what do you guys think about the curse? Real or not? Number 3, The Cursed Poem, Tamino's Hell. Published by Japanese poet Saiju Yasu, it is said that one of his poems named Tamino's Hell is cursed and could kill or haunt people if read loud. So just to not die, I'll be playing it safe and I'll just show you the poem rather than reading it. In 1974, Japanese filmmaker Terayama Suji directed a movie based on Tamino's Hell. Unfortunately, he ended up passing away in 1983. This is where people first believed that the movie was cursed, since the poem was used and read in the movie. As time went by, people began forgetting about the incident, but then in 2004, one Japanese writer published a book based on the poem, saying, quote, if you by chance happen to read the poem out loud, after you will suffer from a terrible fate which cannot be escaped. It's said that even hearing someone saying the poem out loud can lead your life into disaster or even death. So let's read it out loud. I'm just kidding, everyone relax. Nowadays, this poem is feared internationally, but for those who remain spectacle, come on. Give this one a read. Number two, The Curse of the Colonel. This might be odd to hear, but apparently a baseball team in the Kansai region of Japan named the Hunchin Tigers are supposedly cursed by the ghost of Colonel Sanders. Yes, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. According to legend, the curse was placed on the team because of the Colonel's anger over the treatment of one of his storefront statues, which was thrown in the Dotonbori River by celebrating Hunchin fans after their team victory in the 1985 Japanese champ, which was thrown in the Dotonbori River by celebrating Hashin fans after their team's victory in the 1985 Japan Championship Series. The curse was said to explain the team's subsequent 18 year losing streak and many people believe that the team would never win another Japanese series until the statue was recovered. The curse has also been compared to the curse of the Bambino which is said to inflict the Boston Red Sox until they won the World Series in 2004. Despite the supposed curse, the Hashin Tigers have appeared in the Japan series three times since the statue has been thrown into the river, losing in 2003, losing in 2005, and losing in 2014. Whether or not the curse of the current 
Colonel is real, it has become an enduring and fascinating part of the Japanese sports legends. And also, the first time I've ever heard of the Kentucky Fried Chicken founder cursing something. Number one, human sacrifice at the Meiroka Castle. The Meiroka Castle, also known as the Mist Castle, is a Hiroyama style Japanese castle located in the city of Sakai. It is considered to be one of the oldest castles in Japan and is said to be protected by a mist that appears whenever an enemy is nearby. According to the legend, the castle was built at the end of the Sengoku period in the 1500s with the use of human sacrifice known as Hitobashira. The practice of Hitobashira or human pillars was believed to appease deities and protect against natural and man-made disasters. For those who don't know, it is basically making humans into the stone pillars and the walls that make up a building. It was commonly used in the construction of large buildings such as castles, dams, and bridges. However, the story of Mayuroka's castle's Hitobashira centers around a woman named Oshizu, who is a poor one-eyed mother of two. When the construction of the castle was plagued by problems and the walls kept collapsing, a vassal suggested the use of human sacrifice. And this is when Oshizu was chosen for the sacrifice, and she only agreed to this on the condition that one of her children would be made into a samurai. Oshizu was entombed under the pillars of the castle, with stones being placed on top of her as she was slowly being crushed to death. It is said that she accepted her face stoically, knowing that her children would have a better future as a result. After her sacrifice, the walls of the castle remained standing, and the construction continued without further issues. However, the man responsible for the castle's construction, Shibara Katsutoya, did not follow through on his promise to make Oshizu's son a samurai. As a result, Oshizu's spirit returned to haunt the castle, causing the moat to overflow every spring in a phenomenon known as the Tears of Oshizu. To this day, the Mairoka castle is said to be haunted by the vengeful spirit of Oshizu. Some claim to have seen her ghost wandering the castle grounds or heard her haunting cries in the castle during some nights.